Today on Burke Makes Stuff, we're gonna be trading in the shop for the kitchen so that I can teach you about New York bagels. Now I know, this sounds crazy, this sounds totally off of what I usually do, but it's for your benefit. Take a look. It's gonna clear up a major lie that I can almost guarantee you've been sold. It's going to hand you the ultimate way to score major brownie points with your significant other in the simplest way possible. And it's also going to teach you how to make something simple, delicious, Easy, 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 easy with only five ingredients. Trust me, stay right here. First, to clarify the lie. Most of the Americans out there, that's most of you, have been told that this is how you get a bagel. It's a plastic bag with a bunch of bagels inside. They're like bread-shaped objects with holes poked in them. That's just not true. Now, I'm a New Yorker, born and raised, and I can tell you that New Yorkers live and die by the bagel. That's why I'm gonna show you today exactly how to make them, and just so you know, it's possibly the simplest thing I've ever made. It takes a little time, but if you make them for your significant other, beautiful things happen. What do you need? What do you need? What do you need? All you're gonna need to make these bagels is three and a half cups of bread flour, four and a half teaspoons of granulated sugar, one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt, one and one quarter cups of warm water, and two teaspoons of dry yeast. From that initial one and a quarter cups of warm water, we're going to pour off about half a cup into a separate container, and into it we're going to combine our sugar and in a moment our yeast. Now if you're anything like me, the second you add this yeast packet, you're gonna to wanna to stir the hell out of this thing, but don't. Give the yeast about five minutes to sit in the warm water just to reactivate. Just what the doctor ordered. We'll stir it then. If you're making this in real life, go have a cup of coffee. If you're just watching the video, don't worry. It's a video. Five minutes later. Then you're gonna add the flour to your mixing bowl and grab this. This is the actual mixer attachment for your mixing bowl. Now there's a lot of different ones of these, but this is the one you wanna use. And when you start your mixer, you wanna keep it extremely, extremely slow. Actually through the entire process, we're gonna keep it on slow. Cause if you don't, especially at the beginning, flour's gonna end up everywhere. If you look closely, in one second, there's gonna be something awesome that happens right now. That's when my camera battery died. I'm the problem, it's me. And I didn't realize it until the next shot. But don't worry, I can get you caught up in five really simple steps. First, you're gonna add your salt to your flour. Then you're gonna put your mixing attachment on. Mix the salt and the flour slowly together to combine it. Then we're gonna add our liquids, which was our yeast, sugar, and water mixture that we just made. And then you're gonna mix that for three minutes. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. Now at this point, we're going to remove the mixing attachment and go to the kneading attachment. Kneading is the process of folding and pulling and pushing and squishing dough so that you strengthen the gluten molecules in it. That's the chewy goodness that makes a New York bagel a New York bagel. We're gonna be using this for about 10 minutes, but what we're going to do during that time is also super important. While the machine is kneading the dough, which already contains three and a half cups of bread flour, you're gonna take a little more bread flour, just pinches at a time, and slowly add it to the dough. You'll know you're done with this part of the process when the dough stops taking any more flour into itself. Now at this point, almost all of our work for this section is done. We need to actually give these five ingredients some room at this point. What we're gonna do is let them rise, and the way we do that is by putting them into a lightly oiled bowl, making sure that dough is also just lightly covered in the oil, covering that bowl in a damp dish towel and then stepping away, letting those ingredients get to know each other, start their relationship, get blended. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna give them an hour to do what they have to do and then we will be right back here. An hour has gone by and our dough has doubled in size. All we're going to do now is uncover it and then punch it in the face. <laughs> yeah, you actually wanna punch it. Get all the air out of it that you can and then we're gonna replace that towel and let it sit for another 10 minutes. While the bagel dough is sitting and rising for that second time, I'm going to be putting a pot of water on to boil, which we're gonna need a few steps down the line. The dough is now done rising for the second time, so we're going to turn it out onto a cutting board and cut it into eight pieces of approximately the same size. 
Now take each of the eight pieces and we're gonna roll them into tight balls. <laughs> the easiest way to do that with dough is to hold your hand like this, kind of in the shape of a cup. And then while keeping your hand steady, roll the dough around in a circle on either your countertop or a cookie sheet, applying slight pressure downwards as you go and it'll look like this. While I've experimented with many ways to put a hole in a bagel, I think this is by far the easiest. It's just to take your hand, dip it in the flour that you've been using all along, and then shove your thumb through the middle of the ball of dough. You then want to stretch that hole out so it's about a third of the diameter of the finished bagel. When all eight bagels from this batch have their holes, cover them with a towel for another 10 minutes and preset your oven for 425 degrees. After bringing the heat down to a simmer, I'm going to use a slotted spoon to carefully place the bagels in the water ugly side up, because every bagel has an ugly side and a pretty side. How many bagels you can put in your pot obviously depends on the size of the pot, but remember, don't crowd the pot, because when these things get in there, they expand quite a bit. You're going to cook them on one side for one minute, and then the other side for another minute, before bringing them out of the water. When these come out of the water, if you want to add any flavorings, any seasonings, any toppings, this is the time to do it. Or you can have them absolutely plain. My wife and son love these plain. I happen to like them everything. Once your bagels are boiled and your toppings are on, you can throw them on a lightly oiled cookie sheet and put them in your 245 degree oven for 20 minutes. Now, if you're one of those people who can make homemade bagels and not have one the second it comes out of the oven, I applaud you. But I am not one of those people. Mm. That's a really good bagel. Congratulations, you have made it all the way through the video to the end screen. The algorithm absolutely loves that, and it is a wonderful way to show support for a channel you love. I'm privileged that it's mine. Uh, I'm gonna eat my bagel, but I got something special for you. It's a couple of bloopers from shooting this. I hope you enjoy them. I apologize in advance. While the bagel dough is rising again, we- Rising again! Rising again! All right, oh my God, losing my mind. What's the matter? It's pot. Guys, I'm going to be putting a pot of water on to boil, which we will need a few steps down the line. I can't talk. It's like I forgot how to make a video. I don't know.